Hi, my name is Matt from Build That Website, and I hate the WordPress block editor. Well, I used to. The first time I tried it, I found it so confusing. I couldn't find any of the settings that I was used to, and I just gave up. But two years later, I'm a complete Gutenberg convert, and I would never go back to the old way of doing things. So in this video, I wanna bring you up to speed. I wanna show you where all the settings and controls are that you need, plus some insider tricks and tips like how to nest multiple blocks under shortcodes, and how to unleash the full capabilities of the Gutenberg editor. All right, let's get started. So first, let's look at the layout of the Gutenberg editor. At the top, you have your toolbar here. You have the ability to add a block, and this gives you access to the full Gutenberg block library. You can also choose an editing mode. You can choose edit or select. I've never had occasion to choose select, but it's there if you want it. This is the undo and redo buttons. And here is the details button. And this is where you find things like the word count of your post. And finally, we have the outline or what I call the block navigator view. And as we build out this post, you'll find a structured view of all your blocks that have been added so far, and it makes it easy to quickly jump to a specific block, even if it's nested inside another block. The next important part of the Gutenberg editor is the settings panel. And if it's not open by default, you can just click this gear icon on the top right corner to open it. And there's two tabs under the setting menu. We have post level settings, and this is where you'll find things like your permalink, the ability to choose categories for your posts, add tags, featured image, excerpt, etc. And if your theme supports it, you can also choose a sidebar layout or default post layout. And then we also have the block level settings. And depending what type of block you're using, you'll find different settings here. For example, if we're inside this paragraph block, you'll find things like font size or font color settings. Every block also has an advanced tab. And under here, you'll find two things. You'll have the ability to add an HTML anchor. And this lets you create anchor links or jump links that skip right to a certain section on the page. And you can also add a CSS class to your element for additional styling. And I also did a video on styling Gutenberg blocks with CSS. So if you'd like to check that out, just hit the icon in the right corner. And finally, we have the main editor view. And this is where we're going to add and rearrange our blocks. Now there's several different ways to add a block. You can click the plus icon up here as we covered. You can click the plus icon over here to add a block and either choose from the list of most recently used blocks or you can search for a block by name. For example, short code block. And finally, you can use the short code, which is the forward slash and then start typing the name of the block. So if we just type image and then hit enter to complete, it will insert an image block for us and we can choose to upload one or pick an image from the media library. As you can see, the image block here has different settings available in the block settings than the paragraph block did. And you also have some inline settings here. And for example, for the image block, we have the ability to crop, add a link, or you can set an alignment. Over here in the block settings, we have image size. We can make it 50% or 25% of its normal size, but we'll just go with 100 for now. Now the default block type is a paragraph block. So if you don't specify any other type of block and you just start typing, it will default to paragraph. Now you do have the ability to change between block types sometimes. So for example, if I wanted to change this to a list, you can see this is the current block type is displayed in the top left of this bar that pops up here. And this is the last area that you can change settings for a block. We have some text alignment settings, bold, italic, add a link. And then we have these settings overflow menu. Now we could change this, for example, to a list block. So we would just choose transform to list and you can choose number list or bulleted list, but we'll just change it back to a paragraph. There are a couple of block types also that have shortcuts besides paragraph. And that is the numbered list, which you can just hit a number one followed by a period and a space, and it will automatically transform into a list block. And the other option is to hit asterisk space, and it will automatically be a bulleted list. Now, one of the complaints that I saw in the reviews of the Gutenberg editor is that you can't outdent or indent lists, but it's really easy to do. So you can see in the block toolbar here, there's this mode right here. And if we just select a list item and click the indent, it will move it over one level. And now we can continue to work and add list items here. And of course you can outdent it and just bring it back to the main level. And you can separate, you can have a numbered list inside a bulleted list or a bulleted list inside a numbered list. Now, one of the new features in Gutenberg is that compatible themes can actually style your content based on the way that it's set on the front end. So it makes for a better visual editing experience where you know what things are gonna look like. And one example, for example, here in my generate press theme, I have set some heading styles. And so if we add a heading block 
And here we can choose the heading level, H1, H2, H3, et cetera. Uh, but you can see that the font is clearly different and this is a, sort of a unique font. And so this is the H2 heading font that I've set on the front end using my theme. And you can see it's being pulled into the back end in Gutenberg. And just as well, I'm not using some default WordPress uh, paragraph font. This is, I believe, Open Sans, which is the paragraph font being pulled into the back end again. Now, there are a couple other settings that you should know about, and these are sort of the layout of the block editor settings. And one is if you actually would prefer to have your block toolbar uh, sort of be static and not appear and disappear as you're typing, you can set it in the, just click the three dots in the top right corner here, and we can just click top toolbar, and that will move your toolbar permanently up here. So it's always available. And just whichever block you are currently inside of, that is what settings will be up here in the toolbar. And the other option is to turn off or turn on the distraction free mode or full screen mode. And if you turn that off, you'll have access to your full WordPress dashboard here on the left. For example, if you need to get some information from a plugin or something, or you wanna view another post to uh, figure out where you wanna to link to, you could just right click and open that in a new tab. Now, when you're first moving from the classic editor to Gutenberg, it may be confusing to find some settings, but to my knowledge, I think pretty much every setting that was available in the classic editor, you can get inside Gutenberg. But if you're having a little bit of trouble adjusting and maybe there's one or two things that you can't find sometimes, you can simply use the classic block and that will give you every feature that you had in the classic editor inside this block. For example, you have the ability to add headings as you used to in the classic editor, add lists and indent them, set justification of your text and do things like add media. You can also toggle the toolbar to get extra options. And if you have a plugin like uh, Tiny MCE Advanced or something like that, that modifies the classic editor, you will also find those additional settings here. So as you can see, all of this is inside a classic block. And in fact, if when you're coming from the classic editor, if you open a post that was built in the classic editor and you open it to edit in Gutenberg, the entire post will actually be encapsulated inside one classic block. And if you wanna work with it in the Gutenberg editor and try using Gutenberg blocks, it's really simple to convert it to blocks. So all you have to do is go to your block setting bar. And as uh, we already pinned it to the top, but if we just had it in the normal mode, you would just click this convert to blocks option on your classic block. And that will take the classic block and turn it into individual blocks. So now we have an individual H3 block, an individual paragraph block, and an individual image block that has the block editor stylings. Now moving and reordering blocks is really easy inside the block editor. In the classic editor, you used to have to like grab a thing of text and then copy and then paste it and then delete the old one. It's kind of a pain, but with this one, it's super easy. You can either select a block and then just click the up and down arrows to move it up or down one block, or you can grab this little handle here. And if you hover over it, it says drag block, and we can drag this any number of spots up or down. And the nice blue line across shows you exactly where it's gonna be inserted. We can also drag multiple blocks together. So if I click inside this block and then shift click this block also, they will now be temporarily combined and we can drag the blocks together and bring them up here to the top or move them down one by one. Finally, you can group blocks together so they're always part of the same group. And so we just can click the three dots right here and go down to group. And now these will be part of a group. And we can, for example, give this group a background color or something like that and style them together. And I'm probably gonna wanna move the heading up above the paragraph here. So now let's say you've created this really impressive block here and you wanna be able to reuse it on future posts. So maybe it's like an author box or it could be a call out where you're selling your course or, uh, or an affiliate product. So we can add this to reusable blocks and we'll just click these three dots and go to add to reusable blocks. And you just wanna give it a title. So we'll call it and we'll click save. And then next time you wanna use this group on any page or post, you can simply go to your add block and go to reusable. And then you'll find it here, my amazing group. Now, one thing to note is if you edit this group or if you edit this saved block, it will change it everywhere else in your site. So if we click edit here and let's say I want to change the color of this heading and we change this text color to like green, you can see it changed both blocks. And even if this was on a different post, it would change it as well. So if we undo that, so to avoid that, the trick is to first convert this to regular blocks once you've inserted a group. And now if we change this heading color, it 
it won't affect the previous block because this is no longer the saved block. Now, one more block that people have issues with is the shortcode block. So if we go and add a shortcode, and I'll show you what I mean. So we're gonna use shortcodes ultimate. Let's just go for the note block. And this just creates a simple note with the background color if we see the preview. Whatever you put in there would be in here. And yeah, we can add some text content. But there's no obvious way to add more than just whatever text you type in here. Like what if you wanna put a couple other block elements inside this block because it's not actually a nestable block. Well, there's a little hack you can use and I'll just uh, duplicate this block. So I'll go to the three dots you can click duplicate. And now we'll sort of delete the end of the first one. So we basically just have our opening shortcode brackets there, and then we'll put our ending shortcodes brackets in the second shortcode block. And now we can put whatever we want inside these. So for example, I could drag this entire group and put it right between these two shortcodes. And if we update and preview it, you'll see that it's now inside the note and you can put whatever you want in there. So we could delete that. Uh, but say we wanted to put a heading. And if you're wondering the easy way to put something in between two blocks, you can just click on either one of these. So I'm clicking on the bottom one and you can click three dots and put insert before and it will add a block right in between. And so we could add a heading and some paragraph text. And as you can see on the front end, our shortcode note has these two blocks nested inside of it. And there's no limit. For example, if you're doing something like tabs or accordions, you could put dozens of blocks inside another shortcode block if you want. Now you notice that our block library has tons of blocks. I would say more than 20 or 30 come with WordPress by default. And if you add some third-party plugins that have their own blocks, this can really get crowded over time. But there's a neat trick where you can actually disable blocks that you don't use. So if we go to block manager, in the settings menu. And you can just turn off any blocks that you don't want. So for example, I'll turn off my tag cloud, social icons, maybe the RSS, and you can just click the X button. And now if we search for RSS, you can see it's not there. That's been removed for our blocks. Now you're not limited to the built-in blocks that come with WordPress. There are a number of free plugins that include more advanced blocks to build rich content and even entire page designs comparable to drag and drop builders like Elementor. Two of my favorite plugins are Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg and Cadence Blocks. Both are free and you'll find links to those in the video description. These plugins include blocks like tabs and accordions, timelines, post grids, or even complete page templates that you can import to jumpstart a new design. To build better and more beautiful sites with Gutenberg, watch one of these videos next. And to really level up your website game, subscribe to the free weekly newsletter. If you've got suggestions for a future video, let me know in the comments. And as always, please like and subscribe.